this is just a bit of a preliminary um, observation of one of those piece of crap um, fake um, Apple crapple charger thingamajigs that I got and this is just some of the noise on the output this is um, run it again it's pretty crappy but uh, just run that um, Overall, it looks to be um, these pulses interspersed at about roughly two millisecond intervals of. Let's see. I'm kind of hard to do this. There's groups of about 10 pulses or so, about 100 odd millivolts of noise per. Um, or it's 100 millivolts per division and it's about 100, 130, 140 millivolts on either side of the DC level, mostly up, but there's also these little bursty skizzy whizzes down there. Of, uh, let's see, that's 200 nanoseconds per division, so that would be. I'm thinking probably a lot of that is just going to be ringing in my um, suboptimal coupling setup because um, I don't have a proper lab setup. That's all my things so the um, performance of that is not going to be quite optimal. And also it's unloaded right now. I'm going to rig up a load resistor because I don't have a proper dummy load at the moment. But yeah it's fairly noisy and fairly nasty looking. And if we go back to 2 volts of division and go back to a DC coupling, oh, we're in the acquisition again. Um, uh, yeah, you can see it's, uh, let's see, move that down to, well, let's see, it's so volt per division, so that makes it easier. Um, 2.3 volts of division. And I can see it's riding continuously at about roughly the 5.2 volt level, so regulation's obviously not optimal. And you can see all that crap in there. Uh, uh, all little bursty things, and if I stop it. See they're interspersed again at uh, 100 microsecond. Yeah, 100, 300. Now those are interspersed at um. Yeah, bloody. Sad. Uh. Uh. Hmm. Let's see if I can set up the triggering tomorrow to really capture that. Okay, this is a bit of a better trigger on one of the bursts of crap, which is obviously the um, switching supply operating. And um, if you zoom out, uh, oh, that's right, I'm in segmented memory, so that's all the acquisition is. But there are these bursts of activity of about. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 pulses of about in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 different pulses spaced um, every couple milliseconds. So it appears that this oscillator oscillates until it hits some threshold. Then there's just a steady decline and um, then the oscillator starts up again when it hits some other threshold. So again, yeah, really crude nasty power supply which is pretty much what I expected but that's one of the reasons why I um, did this and you can see that's the whole thing played back but again that's one advantage of a ludicrously deep sample memory and of course the obligatory internet cat because this is the internet and he likes to interfere with experiments but anyways um, so yeah you can see the kind of uh, general horrid nasty jankiness and if I get out of this mode um, I can see there's these bursts of activity that are 500 microseconds, so that's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
to about every two to two and a half microseconds there are these bursts of activity which again zooming back in on an absolute nightmare to trigger on um, and uh, Card and uh, I'm use over range. Yeah, it's English, but um, yeah, some pretty nasty, shumpy, hokey, nasty there, and uh, yeah. yeah, that's just pretty bloody janky, and that's 10 microseconds, so that's looks to be in the neighborhood of about 10 10 about a hundred thousand cycle per second ish range these bursts although it's obviously not very consistent so again the oscillator that it uses is fairly crap and um, it's pretty nasty and I am now going to see about reading up a dummy load and seeing how the performance changes And this is the performance of the power supply into a roughly um, a 350 ish milliampere load, which is normal for something you'd see charging off of USB. And it's generating a load of about 160 kilocycle noise. It's about, um, about a fifth of a volt of noise on that rail, which is not good and you can see it's all janky the frequency is rather discontinuous as you can see with the intensity gradient but uh yeah so it's roughly this kind of a really jank sawtooth ish thing but um yeah that's just blob which is what you'd see with a cheap scope and uh yeah i can get an idea as far as good you know, microsecond of variation, so it looks to be varying between about. It looks to be varying, but it's about in the 160 kilocycle range. But you see, just over three cycles, there's about. No, there's about a, a microsecond of noise there. Zoom, about, zoom out a bit, looks really. jank nasty. But. Yeah, and of course you can also see that there's loads of you just stop it. Yeah, you can see that there's all kinds of noise, even down to the mega cycle level there. And you can see it also looks to be varying. It looks like the period increased in a burst. Or no, I'm going backwards. Um, yeah, it's just pretty pathetic. And you can see it looks like it increases, or the frequency decreases and increases in a burst again. Frequency decreases a bit, burst. Decrease burst, decrease burst, decrease burst, decrease burst, decrease burst. But yeah, you can see it's um, that's what it's doing. And uh, uh yeah, it's pretty. I can see when looked at really fast, it looks like bleh. But, uh, yeah. But, yeah, it's pretty jank to say the least. And of course, get out of that mode, and it just looks like blah. And, uh, let's see. 
This is the turn on behavior of the um, power supply. It takes about but about two and a half or two to two and a half milliseconds to fully turn on. There's a big yep, yep, transient spike right there. There's all this crap when it turns on. All these little skizzies and um, there's a buttload of noise and then and it levels off with the usual bursts of crap at must be in this about a uh, 300 microsecond uh, intervals, like about about a millisecond, roughly. And into a load, it uh, takes about four milliseconds or so with a same amount of jankiness on the startup, and of course a much greater amount of noise. So let's see what the intensity grading there. It's rubbish, but you know, typical Chinese crap. And here's the inside of that um, fake supply that I just ran. And I did check to short out all the pins on the board with something metal so um, there wouldn't be any residual charge in that um, yeah, main ripple suppression capacitor. And it looks to be fairly similar to what I've seen. Um, it big and clever and um, EEV blog do as far as teardowns of these fake ones. Um, so, um, single device, um, great bridge right there. Allegedly um, 400 volt, 4.7 microfarad, uh, lytic, some generic Chinese crap, no name. Another lytic there, again, uh, Hua Hong branded, so again, some generic Chinese crap. And a um, MJE13003 transistor being used as the switcher. There's just one device that's just a single end drive transformer, or a single end drive for the transformer. Another transistor, which I'm guessing forms part of the oscillator that then drives the um, main power device, and some other caps down there, which are probably just an RC oscillator or something. On this side, and of course, the transformer there. There's a um, blue um, 2 kilovolt. One nanofarad cap, which is allegedly looks like a Y cap, whether or not it actually is a Y cap, don't know. By the way, if you don't, for those of you who don't know, a Y cap is a capacitor that's safety rated so that it can be connected between mains, live, hot, whatever, active, whatever your local terminology is, and any exposed metal that all the delicate meat bags touching the thing could actually touch. Yeah, yeah. Chang X or Chong X or Ching X. Generic craplytic on the output. There's an optocoupler and a um, Zener diode that forms the feedback loop so that just shuts off the oscillator whenever the potential on the output gets reaches the um, threshold. So that obviously explains the um, activity I was seeing. There's a um, was probably a fast rectifier on the output of the transformer and a um, Ripple suppression capacitor. Both of them are allegedly negative 40 to 221 degree Fahrenheit. Don't trust that in the slightest. Um, because of all the ratings of the components, and then of course there's a fusible resistor uh, in series with the input. But um, and that um, manked insulation on that one wire, which was like that when I opened the thing up, that was not my doing. So, or at least I don't think it was my doing. So uh, it could have been, but I don't know. But um. So yeah, in theory, this thing could handle 240 volts. I'm going to test that once it warms up enough so that I can uh, test that outside because I don't want this thing sticking at my house when it probably will blow up. And of course, there's a safety thing. When I was doing all those experiments, I was running it through an isolation transformer. And um, because, again, didn't want the thing making my scope live because I entirely these things, it, it would be entirely possible for this thing to somehow fail and connect, um, especially that cap, which I wouldn't trust with being an actual mains rated Y cap in the first place. Didn't want it blowing up my scope or electrocuting me. Because, you know, Chinese crap. 
And of course the uh, PCB, it actually looks to be at least a, some of this hybrid, it looks to be like four, 30 or 40 mil thickness, so that's really cheap. But it looks to be hybrid um, fiberglass and um, and um, 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 paper laminate. So it isn't quite as bad as some of these which are just a pure paper PCB, but you know, still rubbish. And of course on the other underside of the board, absolutely horrible clearance and creepage, none whatsoever, don't trust these things, they're crap.